Well, today's video we're going to answer a few questions about the Z63 and its autofocus. What we want to know in general is how good is it for wildlife photography and especially birds? Because this camera does not have bird in it, it just has animal. So we're going to answer a few questions is, how good is that autofocus for birds in general? How does it stack up to the animal versus animal on the Z9 versus Z63? And then lastly, how is the bird on the Z9 versus the animal on this? Did they roll any bird into the Z63 in the animal? We're also going to see what kind of tips and tricks or what kind of issues there may be with the autofocus. So that's what we're going to do today, so let's talk about it. The first place I've come to to look at the autofocus is out at the marsh where there's a lot of tree swallows. And tree swallows why I wanted to get these guys is because they're very small bird, they're a very fast bird. And there's not a whole lot of definition between the head and the eye. It's a really dark head and really dark eye. So if the autofocus locks on that eye, that's a pretty good test of it. And it worked great. From the EVO footage we can see here, it tracked the eye quite well. It stuck on the eye. I could switch from bird to bird to bird when they're sitting on top of these bars on top of the boxes. It would find each one of them. Overall, for the tree sparrows, I was really impressed with it. It tracked really well, stayed on the bird's eye, did really, really good as far as the tracking. And then I heard it, the unmistakable call of a greater yellow legs. I heard them, I couldn't see them, then all of a sudden they start flying everywhere. And they got real active. An eagle flew over, made them all kind of pop up out of there, which was a great opportunity for me because now I could photograph these yellow legs in flight. Now, yellow legs in flight are kind of hard to get. They're very erratic birds, so tracking them is pretty tough. And on top of that, there's not a lot of detail on a yellow legs on their head. There's a little bit more on their tail and their backs and a little bit on their belly by their legs. But most of them, their feather detail is really soft and muted, so it's really hard to look at quality on a yellow leg a lot of times. But it tracked really well. It tracked in the animal for the Z63 much better than I thought it would. It, If it was in open sky, open area, or even towards the grass, it locked on and stayed with the bird almost the whole time. And real quickly, let me explain the colors of the autofocus you'll see on the Nikon system. So there's going to be three colors you're going to see on there, actually four colors, excuse me. The first one is going to be red. If you see red boxes, that means the focus type that it's doing and it's showing you where the focus plane is going to be. If it's green, that means that's the focus plane it's locking onto. So sometimes you'll see red, then you'll see green right after it. So you'll see it blinking back and forth. You'll also see a gold box. What the gold box means is subject tracking is engaged. If you see a gray box, that means you haven't engaged the focus, but it's telling you where the focus point's gonna be for subject tracking. So those are your four colors. So what you notice here, a lot of times you'll see green. You may see green dots, red dots, and then you'll see a gold dot. And what that's really telling you is the red and the green saying, here's my focal plane, and it's right on the bird. It's on the same plane the bird's on, which is great, because as long as you're in that plane, you're going to have that bird in focus. Then the yellow box is when it's actually subject locking on there. So I stayed in auto area AF at all times. Because I was hoping that the autofocus is going to work in a sitting bird on a stick or on something and also in flight. And it worked. It stayed working well. Because what happened prior to the 4.0 on the Z9, we had to go, I would use a large box because the auto area would fail a lot of times, especially birds in flight, especially if they got closer to something with a background on it or something closer to it or muted colors or in the sky when it got white with the white bird and you can see these yellow legs are pretty muted and they're not real they're closer to the sky colors in the sky up there the clouds were pretty white and they could get lost up there but it, it very seldom got lost but the bird autofocus worked really really well really surprised me how well it worked we'll look at hit rate later in this video but for right now i just wanted to show you the in really good sun actually too bright sun what the tree swallows a small bird tracking look like, and what a greater yellow legs, which is not a really big bird, it's only about that tall. But it's it's a pretty tough bird, very erratic bird to photograph in flight, but it tracked it really, really well, so I was really, really happy with that.
converted test for the autofocus was using the teleconverter on this 18600 with the Z63. And I found a really good test subject here at Turn Lake on my way down, heading down towards the Eagle and stuff. And these swans, it was it's two swans with about five signet. They are way out there. They're about 125, 130 yards from me, which is farther than acceptable detail range, but still enough to, that they're large enough that are big enough bird that we should be able to get, uh, you know, the subject detection locked. That's what I want to see. So how did it perform out here with these guys as far as what the camera, what I'm seeing? I don't know about the hit rate. I have to look at the images later. But what it would do is about half the time it would give me the green boxes everywhere on all of the stuff. And then it would lock the heads of the adults, would not lock the heads on the babies. At least I didn't see it. This is a long distance out there. The babies are still pretty small. But for the most part, it locked up the focal plane correctly. It would give me the green boxes on all the birds right where they were, which is really good. And then it would lock the heads, which is really good. In video, same way. It would get to the right plane. You'd see the gray tracking box to tell me where it's tracking. It was tracking the birds quite well. It was hitting the bodies, sometimes the heads, but it was tracking really well. So I think it did very well with that teleconverter with the autofocus here on these birds. Like I said, they're a good distance out there. So we're gonna hop back in the truck. I think I'm done playing with these guys. It's a really low light day. It is really, if you see, it's really, really cloud covered out here. But it's still beautiful. I mean, look at this. Gorgeous Crystal Creek behind me. Beautiful flat glass, no wind, and gorgeous swans here behind me. So anyway, I'm going to grab the camera, get back in the truck, keep heading south, get some of those autofocus tests going. So I'll see you here in just a little bit. It's a beautiful Alaskan day here in Cook Inlet. It is cloudy and it is foggy today and it's really gray. It's actually a good test of this. Like I said in the intro, we're doing a test of the autofocus on the Z63. So since it's such a low light day, it's a really good test of this autofocus to see how it performs in this bad lighting conditions. So for this test that we're gonna do over, we've been doing for the last several days and going on, is we're using the 180 to 600 for the test bed for this. I think that's what a lot of folks are going to run with this camera. If you run a native Z system, uh, you may be running to 1 to 400, things like that, or 600. If there's other lenses you want me to pair with this, let me know in the comments and we'll get that out there and test those lenses with this body to see how they do. Uh, like I said, we're, what we're looking at is how good is the autofocus for this camera? That's the biggest question everybody has. Uh, but I've seen a lot of people ask, I've got tons of messages in, and I wanted to know too, how good is the autofocus since it doesn't have bird. So that's what we're doing. And so for the last four or five days I've been using this, and I had a lot better light, actually probably too much light the last several days. And I was shooting birds in flight, fast birds, small birds, birds that were way out there, a lot of crazy situations. And just by using the camera what i've seen through the viewfinder and looking through the back of the lcd afterwards the pictures looks like it's tracking really well a lot better than i thought it would be honest with you now what i'm going to show you here in a little bit is the evf footage of this camera of these birds in flight uh, on the ground low a lot of these situations are kind of tough for the autofocus to acquire and show you how it did and we'll talk about that and we'll also have some comparisons against the Z9 with birds in flight and the same thing with the animal on this one, animal on the Z9, the bird on the Z9, and the animal on this one to just see how they compare and how much better or just the same, all those type things. So let's get out in the field. Let's show you the EBF footage. We'll look at the hit rate also. We may be back in the studio to look at the hit rate. I don't know. but. I'm going to go back out here and photograph some more birds here today. I'm, I'm loving this. I, I like this kind of light. I was talking about this when I'm talking about the bad weather and breaking the rules type thing. This is the weather I really like to shoot in because I get some really, really neat images. But I'm going to go back out here and test some more of this. But so far, I've been really happy with the autofocus on this, but we'll show you actually what it does. Me just telling you the autofocus is good 
or other people tell you that's good, that's fine and dandy, but I want to actually show you through the EVF footage and the hit rate of the pictures to see what it is. And that's all this video is going to be is about autofocus. We'll do another one with probably some other parts of this camera, and we'll do a full review also at the end. So expect a lot more videos before you get to the soup to nuts full review of the camera itself. But so far, like I said, I've been pretty happy with its autofocus. So let's just show you the autofocus. Talk to you a little bit. Okay, I've been having way too much fun out here on this beach. Look at these. I had found some small gold chicks that were really cool to shoot. Uh, at first, they were laying outside of all the parents, and the parents flew off and they stayed for some reason. And they were just sitting in the rocks, kind of just relaxed. And so I laid there with quite a long time watching them kind of clean and preen. And then eventually, something spooked them and they took off again. But I reacquired them later. And I found them in some water, and I got some really I think, beautiful, I think, and looking at the back of the camera, I haven't looked at it on the computer yet, really nice, beautiful high-key shots, kind of the things I like to get in the winter. I really like those high-key, misty-looking shots, because I got just enough gray light, so it, it worked really well to do high-key images with those birds and not blow the birds out. That's the trick on high-key, but a lot of fun to shoot, and the autofocus worked pretty good, uh, but... Uh, yeah, a lot of fun today. So, I may go try to find something else right here on this beach. I'm going to nail check beach is where I'm at right now. And if I don't, I'm probably going to head somewhere else, take some more pictures somewhere else, and get some more EVF footage of the autofocus in action. So, if I do that, I'll talk to you then. Now, let's get into the subject that most of you want to know, and I really wanted to know when I picked up the Z63, is how much does that Z9 autofocus trickle down into this Nikon Z63 of the bird? So we don't have birds. We've talked about many times in this video, and most of you are aware of. We only have animal. So the first thing I'm going to show you is an arctic turn in those low light conditions down on the Cook Inlet. And this bird is actually kind of in that too far out to get good detail as far as the image goes, but it's a good distance to track. This is kind of a distance where you kind of have problems, especially with a very fast, very erratic bird. And a white bird in a gray sky is even tougher to track. So what we want to see is how well this tracked. And as you can see, right off the bat, it locks right on. Surprise me. Again, we're in auto area AF in this is what we're at. And that's what I want to be in, because like prior to 4.0, I had to go with that box to keep it. I had to keep the bird in that box to keep it locked up all the time, on the Z9 that is. And remember, we're in auto area AF, because prior to the 4.0 and the Z9, we had to use the box to keep that bird really locked up and on a bird in flight, a really an erratic one, especially if you got close to any type of background or in like this with a really white sky. You had to really give it a smaller area to look at. But we're in auto area F, and it is tracking. And right off the bat, when I see the bird, it's out of focus. I kind of see a little blob in the screen. They hit it. It grabbed the bird right off the bat. 
and it stayed gold a lot of the time. At times it would go red and green, which means I'm on the focal plane, but looking back through the images, it was on the focal plane. It was locking the bird still. Even though it didn't say I had subject lock, it was getting autofocus lock at the bird. So it did really well of tracking that bird all the way through the frame. And I only lost this bird when I lost him in the frame of the camera because, of course, if he goes outside of the frame of the camera, tracking's not going to work anymore. But it did really, really well on the Z6 III on the tracking there. And in some bad conditions, and a fast erratic bird, and a small bird that matched the sky and its surroundings. Now, let's look at the Z9 with Animal. We're in the exact same spot on the beach, exact type bird, same distance from the bird, everything. The bird actually flew the same erratic pattern because they were kind of doing this pattern while they were hunting, of looping around. So I could hit them again and again and again. So we put the Z9 up, we hit the bird, does pretty close. It looks a lot like the Z6 III, the Z9 did in Animal. It locked the bird. We see it go to red and green and gold back and forth, just like the Z6 III. Now, that being said, over the many times I tracked the birds with the Z9 in the animal, and I tracked with the Z6 III in the animal, what I noticed was the Z6 III in animal was a little bit better than the Z9. It's not drastically better, but a little bit better. It seemed to have the gold box more. Now, it may not have locked the head. We'll look at bird, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute may not have locked the head as much when it's farther out, but it was locking the body, and it was seen to lock up the gold more with the Z6 III and did the Z9 in animal for birds, okay? Because we're only looking at birds right now. We're not, I'm not looking at uh, just other animals with animal detect because I'm not too worried about that because most of you are worried about that bird detect that's missing from this camera. Now, let's look at the Z9 with the bird detect turned on. And here comes a turn, same distance, same everything. But what you'll notice is it grabs that gold up faster and instead of hitting the body, you can see it looks like it's trying to hit the head and it's locking up. So you do see an improvement in bird on the Z9 as opposed to animal on the Z9 and the Z6 III. But you still will see some red boxes and some green boxes in this EVF footage. So it's still doing about like the animal but it's better it has these tendencies to find the head more often and find the bird more often but i did notice with the bird on the z9 it would lock up the bird with a gold box quicker sometimes with the z63 and the animal on the z9 you would get green or red box to say focus play and then it would lock it up but what you notice with the bird it locks up better so my conclusion on the Z63 versus Z9 and the bird auto detect. Because the Z8 and Z9 work pretty almost identical on birds in the bird auto detect. That's why I just did the Z9 instead of the Z8. And yes, they're, the bird is much better. So I'm hoping they put the bird in the Z63. But it looks like they loaded something in the animal on this with some extra bird in there. Because I seem like over using it over the last five or six days that I've been using this on bird. I've been mainly targeting birds in flight and, and and like that with the greater yellow legs, these arctic terns, seagulls, eagles, anything I could shoot that was flying, uh, the tree swallows and stuff. A lot of times I'm just tracking, I'm not hitting the shutter, I'm just trying to track it. Can Is the, is the lock going to hit it? Is it, you know, when it's out of focus, will it grab it? Things like that. So that's what I'm trying to look at. And there, there has to be some bird from the Z9 bird pulled into the animal for the Z63 because it does look a little better to me than the animal on the Z9. And, and I ran them same conditions back to back, especially as Arctic turns in that bad light, over and over and over and over, back and forth. Now let's get into some tips on the Z63, things that are make your life a lot easier using autofocus. Now these tips are going to work with the Z9, the Z8, the Canon R5, the R7, the Sony, it's going to work for all these autofocuses. They all work about the same in these, the way they work. So the first one is, if you've got the autofocus or your focus plane is sitting way out there at infinity, it's sitting way in the background, way behind the bird, and your bird's out of focus, you can see this eagle that's just out of focus here in the front, and it's big in the frame, but you can kind of see it. So you know the autofocus, the subject tech, should find that bird. So invariably, a lot of times when this happens when you're focused way behind your bird, you get the autofocus. It may jump to that bird, but a lot of times it's going to miss or it doesn't do anything. 
But the trick is, if you tap that button and you see it not jump back immediately, get your finger off that autofocus button, then hit it again. Tap it twice. So tap it, misses, tap it again, and it will lock on 90% of the time right to that animal. If it still doesn't do it, then that's when you use a single point to try to hit that focus plane or use the manual focus to bring the focal plane back. If your focus is closer to you and the bird's out of focus, it most of these systems will go ahead and grab that bird, and this one really will if you're closer to you. So the trick is a lot of times when you know, like if I see, I see an eagle on a stump out here, what I will do before I even hit the focus on the bird is I'm bringing it up. I may hit my single point as I'm bringing it up closer to the ground, but I'm sitting here like this, and I see an eagle. I will hit this single point button in the front as I'm, because I've got my camera down. I hit that single point, it's going to focus on the ground, so when I bring it up, that means I'm bringing my focus point closer to myself. So when I bring this up and hit that bird, it jumps to it. If I had been shooting a bird in flight or something way out there and my bird's closer to me, the focus has a harder time coming to you than going out to it. So that's my main tip right there for autofocus. Because you, if you're focused way behind, it's going to miss. So anytime your focus misses, get your finger off, hit it back again. So the next tip is when your subject was in close to your minimum focus distance. So your animal's sitting there, you know, they think this lens is about seven or eight feet. So let's say the bird's sitting 10, 15 feet from you with this lens. And I pick it up to focus on it, and especially if it's on like a like it's on something like a table or a rail or a, a tree, or you're trying to get that blur down through it or on the ground. What happens is that focus will just kind of do this little number. You'll see it happen a lot. It, every camera does it. It does that little pulse right there. And a lot of times your focus is too again behind the bird, and it just doesn't want to come back. So invariably, what I do when I have a bird that's much closer to me. I always take my single point and I hit it as close as I can to where that bird's sitting. I try to hit the ground or the bird itself or something. I try to bring that focal plane closer to the bird and then the focus locks up every time and it stays on it and it's sticky. So that is my couple big tips for focus is if you can get your focal plane closer to the bird than where it was sitting. So the focal, again, focal plane close to you, way away from the bird, whatever. So single point and then your autofocus subject detect immediately after click click. That is a thing, a skill that I've had to learn with these mirrorless cameras and it's served me well. I don't miss focus very much. For the final say on the autofocus on the Z6 III, what is my verdict on it? It's very good autofocus. I've been pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with the autofocus on this camera and at this price point, to be able to get that autofocus that's really close, that Z8, Z9, I mean, it's not, it's not the bird level, but it is really, really close, and I really feel like they've put some bird in this. This autofocus system this guy is really, really good. And the last part is that hit rate with that autofocus. That's the last thing you've got to look at, because even though the autofocus says, I've locked on, did the camera tell the motors to go to the right place? And a lot of that's your lens, too. The better lens you have, the better accuracy with those motors interpreting what the lens, uh, the camera body, excuse me, is saying where to go with that focal plane at that point. And looking back at the images, the hit rate is really good. The hit rate is right there close to, if not at the Z8, Z9 level, especially in animal. It matched up quite well looking at the images. I've shot the Z8, Z9 a lot, so I know what that hit rate looks like on those. And the hit rate on the Z6 III looked right there with it. So this autofocus and getting locked on with that focus was really good. I, I'm really, really surprised with this camera so far is the autofocus and the hit rate on it. Uh, if it was 33 megapixels or more, this would be, be the one workhorse I'd probably use more than not over the Z9, but over some other cameras. But this is a really good autofocus on this. I, I, I was worried about the animal with birds. I really was. So yes, really happy with the autofocus in the camera so far. And expect the next few videos to be about this camera with some other detailed subjects like this one's the autofocus. There'll probably be image quality, low light, things like that. And then we'll have the overall review of this camera, what I think about it from top to bottom, everything about the camera, and what my final synopsis of this camera is, is all around camera. And until next time we meet guys, get outside and go run that shutter.